Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Scott Blumenthal. This is Aaron Meist over here, Daniel Baker over there. Um, I want to thank you all for coming out tonight. Thank the Brick for having us. So, Aaron, Daniel, and I have been studying the culture, the history, the people of the Ozen and performing its music live for about 12 years now. And tonight, we'd like to share with you a condensed version of a talk that we've proposed for the upcoming Symposium and Conference on Early Offered Studies this fall. Um, full disclosure, we haven't been formally accepted yet, but uh, we do have it on good authority that we've made the short list this time. <laughs> so I promise we're not just going to talk at you tonight. We're going to play two songs for you. Now, on the surface, the two songs seem entirely different. They vary in tone and theme and style. They were composed and performed 16 generations apart. That's 320 years apart in and for wildly different historical moments. But Aaron and Daniel and I have discovered that these two songs are intimately, fundamentally related to one another in ways that have not been revealed before now. And even though the evidence was there hiding in plain sight and hearing. And we believe that the ramifications for this discovery are enormous to understanding the culture of Ozet and the current practices for studying the society. Okay. So uh, let's start by playing a very short sound clip uh, that has been known to scholars for years and years, but has been pretty much overlooked. So this clip is from the beginning of the ninth generation festival broadcast. This is the part of the broadcast where uh, that lays out the agenda for the evening, sort of all the things the villagers are gathered together to do at the celebration. And about a minute in, we hear this. To hear and join voices to the infinity organ of their village, played by those appointed to the labor I don't know if you all caught that, but what the announcer is saying is the villagers are going to um, sing and play together a song accompanied by their infinity organ. So what is an infinity organ, right? Well, uh, in all the centuries since we first heard that phrase, no one in the academic or scientific community has really seriously tried to find out. Now, we're assuming that most of you here tonight aren't in the field, so we're going to give you a, a sort of brief recap of the basic history of the OSEP. So way back in 1928, the, um, the Eurasian Confederated Socialist States sent a series of ships to the comet P-41 as it was passing close by Earth. And they said that they were doing this to conduct a series of mining explorations on the comet. By early 1929, they announced that the mining mission was a bust. But before completely shutting down the, uh, the project, they straightened the comet's orbit, sending it away from the sun and out of the solar system. And it wasn't until the collapse of the ECSS in the uh, late 2060s that the world really learned what had been going on. <laughs> the ECSS had not been conducting mining explorations. In fact, they had forced roughly 1,400 political and religious undesirables to emigrate to the comet and set them up with the basic necessities for establishing 20 small collective farming villages. The new society was called OZET. And it managed to survive until roughly 2380. And even though OZET was one of the first independent off-Earth societies with a rich cultural heritage of its own, it's never really gotten the popular or academic attention that we believe it deserves. OK, so we're going to move on to the songs now. The first song is a big, stirring, optimistic song. It was almost certainly used as part of an OZ-wide centralized uh, celebration, sort of like the Festival of the Ninth Generation that you heard before. So we're going to play it. So the other thing to note about this song is that it was a sing-along, which was a very popular <laughs> form of Ozet song, uh, dating back from the very earliest um, Ozet generations. The second song feels entirely different. 
In it, you're going to hear three short, quirky melodies, each with its own lyrical themes, superimposed on top of a haunting piece for string quartet. was part of a gifting ritual, which was a central feature of the OZ economy and the social fabric in the later years after the city and the central government fell apart. And in this case, the villagers of Village 4 would have been calling to and welcoming another village that owed them a large gift. So what do these songs have in common? That's the question anybody studying the evolution of the music of a society has to ask, right? So to answer that a little bit, I'll give you air. Uh, first, of course, um, there's the thread that it connects all of Ozet's music, and that is the Ozet tone formula. And this single arrangement, this row of 12 notes labeled prime, the top left there, is like the Rosetta Stone for everyone studying Ozet music. And if you invert each interval between the tones in this row and you turn them into a column, and you can construct this 12-tone matrix, which, uh, in which every column and row is an arrangement of all 12 notes of the chromatic scale with no repetition. Uh, every song in the Ozet catalog is connected melodically and harmonically to this particular matrix. And these eight sequences form the basis for the vast majority of those songs. Uh, for example, you're going to hear rows 8, 7, and 4 in the introduction and trumpet solo of The Age of Forever. Uh, another obvious connection between these songs is in the instrumentation that we hear. According to the musicologists, the pioneers had some kind of electronic instruments that were used continuously throughout the history of the Ozet. The percussion, also heard in the Age of Forever, um, is sonically related to the metronome that you'll hear in the gifting song. differences, we ask the <laughs> Why, for example, do we hear trumpet and Ozet guitar in the Age of Forever and not in the gifting song? Well, they answer, uh, maybe by the 22nd generation, all the guitars have been burned for firewood and the trumpets were turned into tools. So, we ask, how then do you explain the string music in the gifting song? Because everyone knows that there were no bowed string instruments on the Ozet. Well, obviously recording, they agree, obviously dating back to Earth, but in all of the years of study, no one has been able to identify the song, the composer, anything about it, so they've sort of collectively thrown up their hands. Well, tonight we want to suggest that sometimes the starkest differences hide the deepest connections. So last year, Aaron and I were, um, we were hanging at my house late one night. We were drinking rye, and we were browsing through the archives of the American Offer Institute. Um, it's a thing we like to do. And uh, they have this incredible collection of instructional films, 16 millimeter films, that were produced on Earth by the ECSS and sent away with the pioneers on the OZ. And as we're watching them, we come across this one. Of course, we recognize the music right away. <laughs> Furthermore, when we more closely analyze this song, we realize that the beginning of the soundtrack is actually built on the harmonic structure of tone row number four. This is incredible. This, <laughs> now, this is evidence that the seed of the Ozet tone formula, which was cultivated by generation after generation of Ozet pioneer, actually originated on Earth, may well have been written by the composer of this soundtrack. Now we've only just started our research on this theory, so we're going to set that aside for now. But we did ask ourselves another question, which was, 
Well, if this film survived intact for over 20 generations on the OZ, wouldn't you expect it to come up somewhere else in the cultural record? So Aaron did a little research, and he figured this out. The film and The Age of Forever are almost exactly the same length. And if you start them at the same time, you can tell almost immediately that the music and the lyrics were written to coincide with the different images of the film. So we've concluded that both songs use the film as a sort of base ingredient. The first one, The Age of Forever, as a visual map, and the other as a musical foundation. And therefore, the musicians of the sixth generation and the few remaining pioneers of the 22nd generation must have had a way to run that film, which brings us to the infinity organ. We would like to propose that these shared sonic and visual elements were produced by a single deliberate configuration of components that was considered an instrument by the pioneers of Ozet. And we're convinced that the infinity organ was a central feature of OZ life and culture beginning in the fifth generation when it was created by artists in the city, through the golden age when uh, individual villages constructed their own infinity organs and built their own sound catalogs, song catalogs around different films, all the way through the revolutions, the upheavals, the collapse of the city and the council, all the way until the very end. Um, okay, so we're not really going to demonstrate the physical configuration of the instrument for you tonight, but we tried to bring together our best representation of the different musical components. We have our synths here, we have the trumpet and guitar. Uh, this monitor will be, um, would have been used to display the sing-along lyrics of The Age of Forever, and then we have the video projector that's going to stand in for what would have been an integrated 16 millimeter projector with all the synths. So uh, I think that's it. We're going to play this one.
myself to be. gifting song. I just want to uh, explain how the string music of the film soundtrack is combined with the sung melodies they are called the prime song. So the film soundtrack moves through a series of harmonic progressions at a BPM of quarter note equals 90. And there are four prime songs. We're going to play three of them tonight. Uh, they are named for the subdivision of each measure. So prime song three divides the tempo of the string music into triplets, resets it as a 4-4 four -four measure gives us a new tempo of quarter note equals 135 over the 90 of the strings. Song five divides into quintuplets, gives us a tempo of 225, and so on. Um, so when you lay them together, you'll see how they connect here, and in a moment, you'll, you'll hear it.
its fear. Locust thorns underneath guard the gift that you bring us. We are happy.